everyone, this is June Blinder at Sapien Technologies. We've been doing a fun series of Friday PowerShell puzzles, and this is the one from Friday, February 3rd, and it compares a function that has a return keyword to a PowerShell class that has a method with a return keyword. And it asks, what does the function return? And what does the method return? So, in this video, I'm going to answer that question. We'll examine the function, including the effect of using the return keyword, and we'll look at a PowerShell class and a method and the rules for using the return keyword. So let's get started. So let's begin with our function, this test return function, fairly typical function. Um, it takes no parameters. It gets the PowerShell process, and because this is the end of the pipeline, it would write that process to standard output, which for us is typically the console. It creates a string, again, end of the pipeline, written to output. It returns an integer, a value of 10, and then it creates another string, again, the end of the pipeline, that would typically be written to output. So let's see what happens when we run our test return function. Um, I'm working here in Sapien PowerShell Studio 2017 and I've pinned our handy console window so that it stays in place and we can see it. I'm going to run this script in the console and PowerShell Studio automatically dot sources the script so that the functions and classes defined in my script are available to me in my console session. So let's try it. Test return. And you can see that the function has returned the PowerShell process that I got. It's returned the first string. It's returned the integer, but not the second string. So what does this tell us about the return keyword in PowerShell functions? Inside a standard PowerShell function, the return keyword exits the current scope. So if I'm inside a function when I use the return keyword, it leaves that function's scope and runs the next command in the most immediate parent scope, if any. It also returns the object that follows it. So in this case, it would return the integer 12. But it does not prevent the function from returning other objects. So in this function, it would return the hello string and anything else that was written to output. But because the return keyword exits the scope, it does prevent any further processing in the function, including returning other objects. Now, let's return to that function. I want to show you one more interesting thing. So back with our function now, you'll notice that it has an output type attribute of system.collection.hashtable, a standard .NET hash table. But PowerShell did not try to convert the integer value of 10 or anything else to a hash table. For better or worse, the output type attribute is kind of like help. It's information, but it is not guaranteed to be accurate. Now let's turn to that class and see what it returns. And here's our PowerShell class. It's a very simple class. It's called return tester. It has only one method, a test return method, with a return type of int32, an integer. Like the test return function, it gets the PowerShell process, creates a string, uses the return keyword to return an integer value of 10, and creates another string. And I've also added a little line that creates a return tester object for us and saves it in the $RT variable so we can use it. So let's try it. Again, we'll run this script in the console. PowerShell Studio dot sources it for us. So that RT variable is there for us and we can run 
the test return method on it. But unlike the function, the test return method returned only the integer. Let's look up here. It did not return the PowerShell process or any strings. So what does this tell us about the return keyword in classes? In PowerShell classes, the return keyword also exits the current scope. So here in our method, after returning the integer, we leave the method scope and execute the next command in the immediate parent scope. But in a class, the return keyword is required to return an object. In this method, only the integer 12 is returned because it's the only one that's preceded by a return keyword. In methods, only objects preceded by the return keyword are returned. The other objects might be written to the pipeline, but they are not returned by the method. Now, let's look at the relationship between the return keyword and the return type in a PowerShell class method. In a PowerShell class method, the return keyword works much more like it does in other similar languages. It creates a contract or guarantee that the method will return a value of the type that's specified up here in the return type. The return type is not required. My method doesn't need to return anything. If I delete that return type, it's saying that I'm not going to return anything. The default return type is a type of void, which means essentially that the function does not return anything. But if I change my return type to void or delete it, PowerShell returns a syntax error. And let's see what it says. It says invalid return statement within void method. And what that means is that I'm using the return keyword to return a value in a method that has no return type or a return type of void. And I can't do that. So let's restore that integer return type. And PowerShell will recognize that we fixed the error. There goes the syntax error. And this time, let's remove the return keyword. So here, I have a function that promises to return an integer, but has no return statement, and therefore returns nothing. And PowerShell again has returned a syntax error that says, not all code paths return value within method. And what that means is that nothing in my method returns anything, so the return value in my method does not match the return type. And that's a syntax error, too. But what happens if I return a different type? Let's scoot out this return statement and put it up here for the string. So this time I'm returning a string, even though my return type is integer. It seems that we have no syntax errors. So I'm going to come down to the console and restart it, since I've changed my code. And I'll run this script in the console. Here's my RT variable, and now when I run test return, the method returns an error, and it says cannot convert this is a string to type system.int32. Now the reason that this isn't a syntax error is that PowerShell is a loosely typed language that tries to convert whatever you've returned to the type that you've specified. And that's done at runtime. So until runtime, PowerShell can't tell if it's able to convert the value to the specified type. But once it runs, it is. And you can see that the return keyword must return an object of the same type or a type that can be converted to that type. And when you don't, you get a runtime error. Here's an interesting case. Here's our return tester class and a test return method. But this time, I have an if statement. And it says, if true, get the PowerShell process, create a string, 
return an integer value of 10 or write an error. This is something that we might typically do in a function. But PowerShell has a problem with this. It has a syntax error that says not all code paths return not all code path hmm, returns value within method. So this if statement creates two code paths. One, if this value of true is true, which it always is, and another one, if the value is false. And while this code path returns as promised an integer value, this code path doesn't. Now, this is a situation where this code path, the first, the if true, will always run, and this code path will never run. But this is a syntax error, so PowerShell is just looking at the syntax of the command, and it sees that only one of these code paths returns the correct value. So what you need to do in this case is write your error, and then return an integer value that's, that indicates to you that it's not valid. So you might return an integer value of 0, or negative one, or something that's meaningful to you as being false. So that's the return keyword in standard PowerShell, like functions, and in PowerShell classes and methods. And it's the solution to our fun Friday puzzle. I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for listening.